Here is the March design. And I've always loved this little saying, kind words are like honey, because they really are. So I wanted to do a little bit of coloring, not a lot, but um, I wanted to show you like on this hive. What I did is I used this yellow, it's called goldenrod, and gave it just a nice even base color. But I wanted it to look dimensional, so I'm gonna add shading. So what I did there is I used this, it's sienna brown. And I always point my pencil towards the line rather than coming in from this side. So that's just a little tip. And um, I just start gently right along the edge and then kind of lighten my pressure as I go towards the center. And you can just build that up and really make it three-dimensional like that. I'll add a little more on this side. And it does kind of blend a little bit once you add the fixative. So um, I think I'm gonna make it a little bit darker than what I would think that I would need to be, but I think in the once it's all done, it will all kind of blend together nicely. Okay, now the other thing I'm coloring is these clovers. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to do a couple of different colors. So I did like a base, and then I went back and added some of this color. So hopefully it'll kind of blend in so that um, it'll give it a little bit more dimension too, just to, um, since the thread I'm using is variegated, I thought that'd be a good way to kind of incorporate that. So this is one idea for March. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fix these colors so that they will stay put when I stitch. So I have my Jacquard textile medium it's a 100 colorless extender. And this is what I apply to the colored pencils to keep them from rubbing off on my hands when I stitch. And then it also makes it um, waterproof so you can wash this. I'm not going to, but if you're designing something you're gonna put in a little quilt, like a baby quilt or something, this is what you'd want to do. So you just wanna make sure you cover the colored area with a little layer. It doesn't have to be super thick. and you want to stay within that color. You don't want to just go back and forth because the color will bleed into the fabric. So that really brightens up that color. Now I'm hoping the color I had picked out will go with that. <laughs> I'm sure it will. I have, I'm sending out positive vibes that it will. So on something like this, what can happen is some of this color, this purple, since it's darker, can actually come off on this brush. I don't know if it will or not, but yeah, see up here, see that? So I don't wanna just go from the purple to this because I'm gonna be painting some of that purple on here. So I wanna make sure I wash my brush out before I change colors. The purple's done, now I'm gonna to move to the yellow, but I did also want to point out that I have this freeze paper on the back of my fabric, and this is how I trace the designs. I'll print the pattern out in reverse and iron it to the back of my fabric. And then it stabilizes the fabric and it makes it really easy to trace using a light box. Um, and I use the Pilot friction pens that disappear with the heat of an iron. Anyway, okay, so it also, I leave it on when I'm coloring because it will stabilize the fabric. So it makes it much, much easier to, to draw on. And I even leave it on when I'm applying this stuff. It will dry. So I'm going to start in the middle where it's light, the lightest color, and work my way to the sides. Because I don't really want to draw that darker color towards the, towards the middle. I kind of want it to stay put. Okay, so now I'm going to kind of move over here. And I do the same thing where I, paint, I point my paintbrush towards the edge. That way you can get it right close to the edge. I think that will be good. I think that that coloring worked out pretty well as far as shading. And even though I'm applying this fixative, um, these lines that I drew with the Pilot Friction Pens, they will come out with the heat of an iron.
you see a little spot there where it didn't get any. You can kind of tell if the, the light's on it just right. And then I'll just do this B body real quick. Okay, so now I am ready to start stitching. And um, since I haven't stitched this yet, there will might be a few changes on here, but um, I think it's gonna be pretty much like this. I'm still debating on how to stitch up these leaves, so I'll let you know. I've started stitching in some of the things, and for the beehive, I'm just doing a simple stem stitch around and a stem stitch on the bottom and on the next row. And then these are just single little straight stitches. Now I'm gonna do a feather stitch and I'm going to use that line as my guideline. If you don't wanna do a feather stitch, you can do a little running stitch or a stem stitch. That's up to you. The, the feather stitch is really pretty easy. Um, what you wanna do is go on, we're gonna alternate the sides that we take from this line. So I'm gonna go on this side of the line and then go back down to the center of, on that line. And the thread is gonna go under the needle and oops, got a little knot there and pull it out. And now I'm gonna switch sides. So I was on the right side, now I'm gonna be on the left side and I'm just going straight across from where that came up. There's a lot of variations to this stitch that you can do. And I'll do one more. Oop, I didn't put my thread under the needle. There we go, down to the opening. So this is a directional stitch. As you can tell, this one is, you know, it's open on one end and closed on the other. So I think what I'll do is alternate and come back and go back and forth and back and forth so that, that it isn't all one direction, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna skip over this door and do a couple more just so that you can see. So you start at the beginning. I'm gonna start on the line I'll come down just to like an eighth of an inch or so off the line to the left, back onto the line with the thread under the needle, and that's the first stitch. And go to the opposite side, back down to the center line. The thread goes under the needle, like that. And just go back and forth until you're all done. I think that'll give the, the hive a little texture, kind of like it's woven. So that is the feather stitch. So this is what the hive looks like once all of the stitching is done in there. And I'm working on this circle part now. So I just used a stem stitch around the outside. And then on the inside, I'm using a little blanket stitch. One thing I wanted to say is, since this is quite a variegated thread, like you can see the difference between this side and this side and the color of thread. You wanna make sure if you run out and you need to start a new strand of thread to use it at a spot where the color is gonna match like that. You wouldn't wanna start here because then it would really look choppy. Okay, so for a blanket stitch, you're gonna pull your needle up right on the line. And in this case, the teeth are gonna be going in towards the center. So I'm just going to go over a little bit and then back down to that center line or to the drawn line and put the thread under the needle and pull. And then you just continue on that way. And I kind of like the way it almost makes it look like it's um, appliqued on this center little, like it's a patch, which is kind of cool. So I'll finish that up. The words, I'm going to stitch using a back stitch because there's some pretty tight curves there. And if you have um, that type of thing that you're stitching on, a back stitch is a really nice stitch to use. Um, I think it just makes a cleaner line. 
Plus, I wanted it to be very legible to read and um, have a, a thinner line than you would if I did a stem stitch. So for a back stitch, I'm going to start, here's the letter A, so I'm just going to start at one end. I'm going to take an eighth of an inch and then come up about an eighth of an inch. And now I'm going to go back in that same hole and go past where the thread come, came out another eighth of an inch. And I just continue that. Sometimes I have found I do a better job on my back stitch if I use a hoop. So if you're having trouble, you might wanna do that. Um, I also found it depends on the fabric that I'm using. I think it's a bit easier for me using this um, mode of linen because the weave is a little bit um, looser. So it really makes a definite hole and I know exactly where to put my needle in. And uh, the back stitch is a pretty quick stitch. So you'll have those words done in no time. Just like that. This little bee here is so tiny I'm just going to use fly stitches to make him. So I did one fly stitch this direction, and you know how you tack it on the other side of the loop for fly stitch? I just made that stitch a little bit longer so it's um, a little bit of a stinger there. And then to do the top, you're just going to carry the thread up around like the shape of the top of the bee. I'm going to go across the bee to this side Bring my needle up at the top and make that fly stitch. Now, instead of bringing my needle down and tacking it right on the other side of that, I'm gonna bring the needle out to the side and then up on this side, and those will be the antenna. Whoop. And that's the second one. So I'm gonna do the wings the same way. I'm just going to do two fly stitches. So there's one. And this time I am going to tack it right on the other side. And there's the second one. And then the bee needs some stripes. So I'm just going to just do a few, like a um, satin stitch. So I'm gonna come straight across and then I'll take maybe two or three stitches. Right there, I'll do two, I guess. And then I'm gonna move up a little bit. I can get my needle to come up where I want it. So there's one stripe. And then I'll come over here. So yeah, it just looks like just two stitches are enough to, to um, make a stripe. I've got a knot there underneath that I'm getting hooked up on. Move that aside. There we go. Okay. And there are his stripes. So these little bees are actually super, super easy because it's basically just fly stitches and a couple of satin stitches and then you're done. And I decided to do him in these same colors because he's going to be kind of part of this label rather than an actual picture of a bee. So, whoop, got caught up. One more wing and then this little guy is done. And then I just have one more word here, kind. Now I want to show you uh, these clover leaves. So in my mind's eye, the leaves of a clover have a little dimple at the top. So that works perfectly with using a fly stitch. So we're gonna use a fly stitch to make these. It's easier for me to do a nice filled in leaf um, using a fly stitch rather than a satin stitch. And it, I think it goes faster. So here's the center line and we're gonna bring our needle up on one side of that center line down on the other side of the center line, pretty close to it though. And then just go down like a 16th, not very far of an inch. The thread goes under the needle 
and there's the little dimple. So we're just gonna tack it right on the other side of that loop and then bring the needle up again right next to that first st stitch on the outside line of the leaf. Then you just repeat that and have your stitches pretty much touching each other. You're coming up right in that same hole that that stitch to anchor was in and then anchor that stitch. And you just continue all the way down until you have the leaf filled in and it actually goes pretty quick. So it's kind of a fun way to do a leaf, especially one that you want to have that center vein because this definitely shows the center vein. Just like that. So I'll finish these and then we'll move on to the clover. Little clovers are actually pretty easy to do. The way I begin is I'm just going to do a stem stitch all the way around the outside and I start at the top. And since it's a curved line, you're going to carry your thread on the outside of that curved line. And once you get to the top, we're going to do some little fly stitches. I mean, excuse me, lazy daisy stitches like these. So to do a lazy daisy stitch, I'm going to loop the thread around and put my needle right back where I brought the needle up to begin with and then go up. You can kind of pretend there's a little loop drawn there. I'm going to put the thread under the needle, pull it away and tack it right on the other side of that loop and that will anchor it in place. And I'm just going to repeat that so I have a total of three little top knots on this clover. So again, you're just going to bring the needle up at the base of the loop, bring the thread around, put it right back in that same hole and coming up and angle that direction. Thread goes under the needle, pull, and then just tack it in place. So that's a lazy daisy stitch. You can see they all have that on top. They also have it down here at the base with um, the green thread. So the next thing I'll show you is how to fill that in. It's really easy, just a few long stitches. So we're gonna fill in the center area with a pretty loose basket weave stitch. Really simple. On the pattern, there will be lines drawn. You can trace the lines if you want and do it exactly the same, or you can just do some of your own lines. Um, I'm gonna do, an, at, do them at an angle. So one thing I have found helpful is if I actually bring the thread down so I can see where I, where I want the thread to go and then put my needle down. And then I'm going to just space them pretty close together. And same this direction. You can see if I just put my needle down, it might not be parallel with that line. But if I actually pull the needle or the thread up, I can see exactly where I need to put the needle. Okay, and so these are spaced about an eighth of an inch apart. And oops, see that one I didn't hold pull the thread and you can see it's not parallel. But this is from nature and nature isn't perfect, so I'm gonna leave it. And then the next step is to do stitches going the other direction, the opposite direction. So I'm gonna pull them up this way. And what I'm gonna do is just go under, over, under. So I'm weaving it like that. And then just put the needle down. So it's just a three or four stitches each direction. Now when I weave it, I'm just gonna do the opposite. So since I went over, I'll go un or since I went under, I'll go over, under, over, under. And that just holds them in place.
it's a really quick and easy way just to give it a little bit of texture. Um, I think it, it really, even though these don't, these don't look like an actual clover, it kind of gives that impression. So that is how I'm going to finish up stitching this guy. The last little piece of this stitchery is this bee. And I did a stem stitch around his body and then a back stitch around the wings. These are just straight stitches here. These are just little straight stitches and I didn't work real hard at keeping them, um, you know, even at the top and bottom because I kind of wanted it to look furry, <laughs> like those big bumblebees. And then the head, I'm just going to do a satin stitch. And I could fill this in with um, like a black Sharpie or something if I wanted to, just so that if my stitches aren't perfect, I'm not gonna see the fabric below, but I'll try to do a really good job so I won't have to worry about that. So satin stitch, you're just gonna go across from one side to the other. You don't pull them too tight. You want them to lay nicely on the top. And this is one stitch where I do find it's a little more helpful if I use a hoop, even though I'm not using a hoop right now. But if, you have, if you're struggling with it, you might want to try using a hoop. So there's his head. This design is all done and finished, so I'm ready to move on to the second version. And for that, I decided to do all black with just a touch of yellow or gold for the bee. So I'm just using a black DMC thread and um, I didn't fill these in because I think it would just look like big block, black blobs on there. And I wanted to show you an option for doing it a little more simply than using this fly stitch. So I did go ahead and stitch these up using two strands of floss. I stitched a few and it was just too, too clumpy. So I took that out and this is using just one strand of the DMC. And instead of weaving this, I did uh, just some back stitches. And that these leaves and the clover are the only thing I used one strand for. The rest of it, I still used two strands. So for the B and for this middle part, I used two strands of floss. And the other difference is um, I used just a running stitch for the hive. So if you don't want to try the feather stitch, which is a little more complicated, you can just use a running stitch. And for the B, I went ahead and filled it in with satin stitches. So on this one, I had just colored it in, the gold part. But on this one, I decided to go ahead and fill that in. And I do like the way it just makes just the B part pop out a little bit. So I went ahead and outlined the little guy too with a black before I filled it all in. And then same as the other one, the wings are backstitched on that little guy. And the words are also backstitched. And that is the design for March. A couple different ways to choose, or you can combine those. And uh, make sure you post pictures. I'd love to see. And I hope you enjoy this stitching. Thanks.